You know, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. It's a place where you would routinely see presidential motorcades driving down the street on your way to get ice cream. You could get pretty casual about a lot of very famous and important people, but there was one guy who remained a god to all of us, no matter who you were, and that man was John Thompson. To say he was a giant is doing a disservice to his stature. To say he was a Hall of Fame basketball coach is a disservice to his impact, which went way beyond the court. And to say that there was sadness when his family announced yesterday he had passed at age 78, yeah, that does not nearly cover it. Where do you start with John Thompson? Well, you could talk about the way he took a sleepy average basketball program and made it into a national powerhouse, how he helped develop Patrick Ewing, the anchor for the Hoyas 1984 championship team. That title made Thompson the first black head coach to win a men's D1 basketball championship. It was a see it be it moment for young coaches all over the country. But it was his emphasis on education that really resonated. 78 of the players he coached went all four years at Georgetown. 76 of those 78, 97% of them went on to graduate. Thompson cared about his players and wasn't afraid to take a stand in their defense. Like in January of 1989, Thompson walked off the court before a game against Boston College. This was in protest of an NCAA vote to deny athletic scholarships to freshmen who didn't qualify academically. It was estimated that about 90% of the 600 students who would have been affected each year would be black, which Thompson would not stand for. The that day, he told the Washington Post, quote, this is my way of bringing attention to a rule a lot of people weren't even aware of. I did it to bring attention to the issue in hopes of getting the NCAA to take another look at what they've done. And if they feel it unjust, change the rule. Again, not afraid to take action to force change. This is why his former players loved him so much. Here's Allen Iverson on Thompson at his Hall of Fame induction speech in 2016. I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Coach Thompson for saving my life. Um, for giving me uh, the opportunity. The incident happened in high school. No other teams, no other schools were recruiting me anymore. My mom went to Georgetown and begged him to give me a chance, and he did. Wow. Uh, other former players weighing in on losing Thompson yesterday, Patrick Ewing, who is, of course, the current head coach of the Hoyas, saying, quote, Georgetown University, the sport of basketball, and the world has lost someone who I consider to be a father figure, confidant, and role model. Another Hall of Famer coach by Thompson, Alonzo Mourning, said, quote, the world has lost a revolutionary icon and a leader. Today I have lost a father figure, lifelong coach, and one of my greatest mentors, Coach Thompson, saved my life. This time, I would like to welcome two people who knew John Thompson well, my friends, former Washington Post colleagues, longtime columnist, now director of sports journalism at the prestigious Medill School of Journalism at Northwestern University, J.A. Adonde, and of course, the co-host of PTI, the legend Michael Wilbon. Guys, thank you so much for being here. We were all texting yesterday just about Big John, and, and Wilbon, can you start with the legacy of John Thompson? Well, Rachel, you know, what's interesting now watching all the coverage and watching some of the clips you just had leading into our segment, Allen Iverson is so much of it. And, and the story's unbelievable. Allen Iverson and that story are still compelling. And most of all, for people, say, under 45 years old, it, it's memorable. But that was the end of the John Thompson time at Georgetown, or close to it. He retired mm -hmm. in 1999. Iverson was there in 95 and 96. That's the, the, the back end. For those of us old enough who were here in the 1980s um, covering Georgetown and around a lot, there's so much more. Patrick Ewing isn't even the beginning. You know, Sleepy Floyd and, and a whole slew of players, John Duren and Craig Shelton. John Thompson had taken Georgetown to the, to the Elite Eight before Patrick Ewing got there. And then Patrick Ewing comes and, yes, it vaults them in, in, into the national spotlight in the context of the Big East. But John's legacy to me deals with education and sports as much as anything. You talked about the protest and walking out of that game, which I attended uh, low many years ago. It was about 
education and what it is that kids would need. Remember, I know you and, and J.A. both know this. He had that deflated basketball mm -hmm. in his office, and yep. the deflated basketball was there because it was a reminder that it's not always going to bounce, that you're going to have to do something else. And John hated the phrase fall back on education, which is why I came to hate it so much. Um, you don't fall back on education. You use it every day. And to hear John Thompson was so demanding. I mean, he could be warm and fuzzy when he wanted to, which was sort of rarely, because he knew he <laughs> needed to pry and he needed to instigate and he needed to force and cajole. And sometimes you say, well, John did a week. He'd say, shut up. Don't tell, I don't want people knowing I'm that nice. We don't need that. <laughs> We're trying to get through something here. Jay, Jay knows these stories. And so the, the, his legacy to me is all these things. It's, it's from before Patrick, through Patrick, through Allen Iverson. It was, it was national. It was the, the Georgetown clothes on the streets and cities where they didn't even know what Georgetown was or where it was. And so all of these things John Thompson brought to the table. John, Look, I never played for John Thompson. I didn't play college basketball, but John Thompson coached the hell out of me for 40 years. Yep. I, I, I texted that to Patrick Ewing this morning, and Patrick laughed and texted me back, and he knew what I was talking about because if you were around him, the seriousness, the gravity of the conversations, the depth, the intellect of the man, all of these things are his legacy. And, and you know, for me, Rach, I mean, 30% of it may be basketball. So much of it doesn't relate necessarily directly to basketball, even though that's the arena and that's the context.